Get it together. Hey, we gonna make it. We gonna fake it till we make it. Yes. Hey, on Brad. Out of the dark. Good morning, Antioch. My, na My name is Mason Kirby, and I will be opening up today with the announcements. This is a special Sunday called Youth Sunday, which is basically a look into the future with church being ran by the youth. After the second service, we will be having a meal for those who are joining us down by the river for baptisms. At 5.30, we will be having dinner at Awana's Derby. Feel free to come eat with us. When the service is over, we love to connect with newcomers over a cup of coffee and some cookies in the kitchen. That's all for this week's announcements. Please stand, and I challenge you to join us up front for worship. Amen. I'm going to pull another disclaimer out uh, this week, like I did last week. <laughs> I'm not tired. My voice is fine. I just congested like really bad. So we're going to give it everything we got up here. Amen. 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 Let's get a little excited this morning being Woo! God's house. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm idiot. 
need all I can get of you. Hallelujah. Here. Amen. Praise the Lord.
pray this morning. Lord, it's a blessing to be here this morning, Lord. Such a good time. Lord, we just thank you for all the youth today, Lord, that are helping out, serving. Lord, it's a blessing to see them up here, Lord. And just put it on their hearts, whatever we need to hear this morning. I know we got some guest speakers up here, Lord, and just, just calm the nerves, Lord, and open our hearts this morning, Lord, and bless this offering. Lord, we love you and praise your name. Amen.
morning, my name's Addie, and today we'll be reading scripture out of 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 17. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires. But whoever does the will of God abides forever. Let's pray. Jesus, I pray over every single person in this room that you will help us to realize that we do sometimes get carried away by the desires of this world, and we don't see the desires that you have for us, Lord, the plans you have for us, Lord. I pray that every single person in this room today will have their eyes, ears, and hearts open to the word of you, the word of you today, Lord. I pray that you will help Micah and Robert to just touch every single heart in here, Lord, that you will convict every single person of everything we have done that is sinful and just against you, Lord. I pray for the baptisms after second service, Lord. I pray that you will just help every single person in here to not be afraid to get out of their seats at the end, Lord, to be able to come to the altar, Lord, and praise and worship you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Let's welcome Robert. Good morning. Uh, well, there goes that. We'll get that later. Um, yeah, thank you. That's for my guess. Um, I hope you all have a good morning. My name is Robert. A lot of you already know me. Um, today we'll be talking about living with one foot in each world meaning halfway living for God and halfway living for world or sin. The verse it's on is 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17. It says, do not, love the, do not love the world or anything in the world. Love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the eyes and the pride of the life, comes not from the Father, but from the world, or not from the Father, but from the world. Now, now the world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. Amen. Meaning, if you believe in God, you need to put your full belief in Him. You can't just show up on Sunday, sit through the sermon, and leave and act a fool. If you believe in Him, you need to be proud of that and show it. I'm not saying you need to be going out and shouting at people saying you love God, but if someone's having a hard time, it's as easy as saying, God loves you, or can I pray for you? Amen. Amen. The truth is, it is impossible to fully follow Jesus when you're still chasing the world. Amen. Believers in Christ are called to be set-apart ones. We do not straddle the line. We stand on the right side of the line and call others to the light. John 10.10 10 says, The thief comes only to steal and destroy. I have come that they may live may have life and have it to the full. Amen. Amen. As we trust more in Jesus and have confidence to act on his will, we may have to turn down opportunities that seem great because Jesus has called us elsewhere. Right. Or accepting callings that scare us. Acknowledging God and everything means that we remember that no, cir that no circumstances come to us outside the Father's will. Knowing this will give us strength despite the difficulties, pains, and fears because we know that God will never leave our side. That's right. Amen. Amen. I know it's not easy to jump right in and believe in God that fast. A lot of times it comes and it takes time, and it can be hard. But if you have the right people and the right mindset, you can do it. Just believe in yourself and put your faith in Him. Now I'd like to tell you how it became real for me. I'd say I found my way to Christ through the church and the adults that have told me about him. As a kid, I was forced to come to church because my mom was doing nursery and my dad was always doing the security. As a kid, I never really wanted to come. <laughs> I'd rather have just stayed in bed or watch TV. As I got older, I always found myself wanting to go and always asking when we're going to church. It is definitely something I look forward to on Sunday mornings. I think the reason I look forward to going is because of Sunday school and youth. 
I'm not saying Dave doesn't do a good job. He does an amazing job. But I think it's so much fun and easier for kids to learn about Jesus surrounded by kids their own age. I know it sure did make it easier for me, especially when I had such a great teacher like Miss Jenny. With growing up being forced to come to church, I usually was here for both services. So after sitting through it twice, I usually came out learning something out of it. I think being forced to come made me realize it's not so bad, and I think God spoke to me through the people of the church. Last thing I'm going to say is going to youth is real great, and I think it helps kids learn about them easier. So I've learned a lot through youth, and I strongly suggest that parents take your kids to youth. I know it wasn't long, but that's all I got. So, <laughs> thanks for letting me speak. Now here's my go. One more time for Bobby. Am I right? Yeah, it's great. Had a boy. Um, when it became for real for me is uh, I'm going to be honest. I've chased the things of this world. I've tried to love them. I've had one foot in church and one foot in lust. I've had one foot in the youth group. I've had one foot in the crowd. And uh, let me tell you a story. I was talking to Pastor Jenny the other day, and she said, if you were born a leader, you'll always be a leader. So if you're running from God, you're just going to be dragging people in the wrong direction. I realized I need to turn around and get both feet following Jesus and lead my friends to Jesus because he is coming back, and we don't know when, but I feel I have a feeling it's going to be soon because you see what's happening in the world, and I got a feeling it's going to be pretty soon. I would rather fail trying to follow Jesus than succeed and be known for things that do not matter. I've given in the temptation of trying to find my worth in worldly things like TikTok trends, talking like my friends not being myself, cussing, and the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life choke the Holy Spirit in your life. Uh, I'm going to go into point number three called the worth. And there's no lasting value in the things of this world. Verse 17 says, the world and its lust is passing away. That means it's dying and decaying. Don't love the world for the things of the world because they will never love you back and they will never last. God's love for us is never failing. It is everlasting and it is real. Jesus will never forsake you. Why waste time trying to fit in with fake people that you won't even see in a few years when you are loved and accepted? You are loved and accepted by the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's the only squad you need, the God squad. The other night, my dad was preaching at the youth rally, and he was talking to the youth about being real. And I think the adults need to hear that this morning. We need to be real with God. We need to stop putting on our pretty church face and get real with God. You need both feet turning and running towards God. We all know we're having one foot in both worlds got Lot's wife. All right, remember Lot's wife? She gave up her eternity with God for a final glimpse of a sinful city. It is not worth it. Remember Achan, who kept some of his treasure hidden in the tent when God said destroy all of it? It cost him and his family their lives, and it cost Israel a victory in battle. Your sin never only affects you. When God says something needs to die, kill it. Don't keep your sin on life support. Let it die. I'm going to say that again. Do not keep your sin on life support. Let it die. Uh, C.S. Lewis once said, never base your happiness on something that you can lose. Jesus said, what does it profit a person if they gain the whole world and lose their soul? Your worth isn't defied by the pride of life. Your worth isn't found in your possessions and your likes and your superficial relationships. It is defined by God, and it was worth Jesus' blood. Now, I got this $100 bill. Man, anybody want this? Multiple people, that's great. Yeah, like it. What if I just like, what if I just like crumble it up? You still want this thing? What if I just like, that would off, you still want this thing? What if I just like, you still want this thing? Why? Because it never lost its value. That's right. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to buy lunch later. You know what I'm saying? It does not matter if you've been tossed around, if you've been stomped on, if you've been crumbled up, you never lost your value. You are always still valuable. Now, who knows who's on the $100 bill? 
Benjamin Franklin, right? So it's worth, $100 bill is worth $100 because of the image it's made in, right? You are made in the image of God. Therefore, you are priceless. You cannot put a price tag on you are priceless. I know some of you are thinking, I'm, like, I'm way too lost. I'm way down the wrong path. Um, let me tell you a story about my man, Chili, all right? Where are you? Oh, there he is, right there in the back. Yes, sir. Um, so we were uh, at their baseball game, and I was about to go in and close the game. You know, it was getting pretty tight, and I wasn't playing the best. And he looked at me, and he told me, it's not how you start. It's about how you finish. Now, hey, apparently that he stole that from Nancy. You know what I'm saying? We don't, we don't know. Investigate after service. But this morning, it's not too late to get both of your feet on the solid rock of Christ. But you need to make a move. You can't just stay in your seat. You need to come up to the front like all the youth were up here praising. Don't let them out praise you all this morning. Now, I'm going to ask the worship team to come and the prayer team as I close with this. But this morning, many of us have one foot in both worlds. And it is time to come to Jesus to leave the lust of the world and the pride of life behind and receive his promise to live forever. The final verse says, and the world with its lust is passing away, but the one who does God's will remains forever. Do you want to live like the world, or do you want to live like Jesus? Jesus followed the will of the Father with both feet. He prayed in the garden, not my will be done, but yours. Your will be done. It is so much more fulfilling being in the presence of God and living with both feet following Jesus. If you won't stand for, if you won't stand for something, you might fall for anything. Stand for Jesus. Follow with both feet, with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. This morning, if you want to follow with both feet, respond and come to the altar. And we all know there's baptisms after service, right? Going to be good food there. And it's not too late to get saved. You can get baptized. We'll get you a towel, an extra change of clothes. And you come up here and repent and let him know that he's your Savior. I'm going to pray this out. Uh, Lord, thank you for this beautiful day. I thank you. For everybody that came here, you know, just to come to service because their uh, cousin or son or someone that they love is getting baptized, I pray that you would speak to their hearts, Lord. I know that you're tugging on some of their hearts right now, and I pray that they would make the move and not stay in their seat. And they would know that they're, they are priceless and they are valuable because they're made in the image of God, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
that has a kid up here and everybody standing out there I think I think y'all need to come up here and just let these kids give something to y'all that y'all haven't received because I know they got it in them they're standing up here waiting for somebody to come talk to them let them pray for you this morning it's okay I promise it'll be just fine let it go close us out today. Is that alright, Dave? It's good? <coughs> After I get rid of that. Oh. This is what I'm talking about right here. Just let everybody know this, this is our future. This is the future church up here. Give them all the encouragement that you can. It's alright to show them love. Y'all did great. Alright, let's close out in prayer, Lord. It's a blessing to be here, Lord. Just thank you. Thank you for all the hearts that you've, that you've gotten, Lord. Just thank you for everybody being here. And, and just, Lord, I 
Lord, it's amazing to see how you work, Lord. Lord, just bless us this week, Lord, and let us return safe for the next time, Lord. We love you and praise your name. Amen. Y'all have a good week.